friends, I'm Amber of The Little Research House where we constantly seek out the joy found in the little things. This week, I am finally going to tackle our outdoor space. We moved into our house about a year ago and I had just had Mabel. So needless to say, our outdoor patio was not high on my priority list. However, now that we've been here for a year, we're feeling a little more settled, we decided it's finally time to make this space a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more inviting, and a little more open for our friends and our family to enjoy with us. This process has taken me a couple of weeks to pull together, but I finally think we're at a place where we have everything we need, we just have to put it into action. So I'm hoping you'll join me as I pull the space together and finish decorating it and making it the space that we hoped it would be. Let's get started. Before we begin, let me show you what we started with. Our backyard is fairly small and has a pool. A brick patio surrounds the majority of the pool and takes up most of the outdoor space. We have a few hand-me-down chairs that we'll likely keep on hand for when we need them, but we definitely need more seating. I'd also like to have an outdoor dining space or at least some sort of table to be able to set snacks and food on. We are lucky to inherit some beautiful perennial gardens, but one thing I absolutely love is growing fresh herbs. So I'd like to find a stylish way to get some of those going, ideally without planting them directly in the ground. Here's the plan. I'd like to create two different zones, a dining zone and a lounging zone. I'd like a dining table with some warmth and style and ideally with versatile seating options. I found this beautiful farmhouse style outdoor table with benches and think it will fit our narrow space perfectly. In terms of accessories, I'd love to get a set of melamine dishes that we can use by the pool so we don't have to worry about broken glass. For the lounge area, I'd like to get a rug that grounds the space and makes it feel more inviting. I found these simple and beautiful outdoor chairs from Ikea that can actually be attached together to form a couch. I figured I'd start with two identical chairs, but in future years we can always add to it or have the option to change up the arrangement. To soften it up, I'd like to draw in some interesting textures and textiles, like a woven or rope ottoman, simple contrast throw cushions, and a light but cozy blanket. I have a few pots in the garage that I'd love to spruce up so I can grow some fresh herbs. Down the road, I'd like to build some raised planter boxes for herbs, but since the season is already getting away from us, this will be an adequate option for this year. We also don't have a huge budget for this project, so I've included a few additional items that I'll add in as we're able, like a beautiful white umbrella, some braided placemats, and a new outdoor light fixture. I couldn't find any inspiration pictures that directly captured my vision, but generally I'm going for something soft, inviting, and fresh. The first thing I did was order the bigger pieces of furniture. They each came over a series of weeks, so we assembled them as they came and put them out back. Both the table and the lounge chairs were really easy to put together. While we waited for the furniture to come, I got started on a couple of DIYs. I wanted to have some form of table or ottoman for the lounge area, and after much humming and hawing, I landed on a DIY rope ottoman made out of an old tire. You've likely seen these DIYs on the internet already, so I won't go into a detailed tutorial here, but I will show you how I approached it. I started by cleaning the tire with dish detergent and water so the glue would bond. I then roughly measured the opening of the tire, being sure to include some overlap of the rubber and trace two circular shapes of this diameter onto a quarter inch thick piece of plywood. I used a pencil tied to a string, tied to a nail to create the circular shape. I then roughly cut out each using a jigsaw. Once I had my plywood circles, I screwed one onto the top opening and one onto the bottom opening. I originally attempted using bolts with a nut to hold on the bottom piece, but the rubber prevented me from drilling a hole large enough to fit the bolt. Eventually, I realized that simply screwing in a regular screw with lots of depth was adequate enough as the rubber tightly gripped onto it as it went through. Next, I attached the leg plates onto the bottom circle. I made sure to measure them out equally for stability and pre-drilled holes before screwing them in. Once all the plates were attached, I spray painted the bottom board and leg plates white as I wouldn't be covering this portion with rope. I flipped the tire over and found the direct center point of the top board and started my rope there. I used heavy duty interior exterior construction adhesive and a half inch natural sisal rope. This part was by far the most tedious, but once I got wrapping, it became very satisfying. I made my way across the top, the sides, and eventually towards the bottom piece of wood. I ended up using way more glue and way more rope than I anticipated, stretching this project over multiple days and multiple trips to the hardware store for more supplies. 
My large truck tire used nearly 400 feet of rope and over four tubes of glue to cover it. To finish it off, I sprayed a couple of coats of interior exterior protective spray in a matte finish and then attached the legs to the leg plates. I'm thrilled with how this turned out, but I do want to say that it cost a lot more money in supplies and time than I anticipated. DIY is not always the most cost effective way to do things, but sometimes it's the joy found in the process of making something that makes it feel worth it. Just something to consider if you want to take on a similar project. As I mentioned, I had a few pots kicking around my garage that my neighbor had given me. They weren't exactly my style, so I decided to spruce them up with a little bit of spray paint. I found this cool stone spray paint and I decided to try this as another way of integrating a little more texture into the space. It applied like regular spray paint but required a handful of buildable coats. Once my pots were dry, I added stones for drainage and soil and then planted a series of fresh herbs. On the patio, I added some simple hanging baskets with the hanger removed to a set of stone pots I had on hand. On to the accessories. I already had this set of outdoor throw cushions but wanted to update them. I ordered some simple and inexpensive dark gray linen covers to spruce them up. I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I had ordered that have now arrived. First of all, I have our outdoor rug, which I haven't even opened yet, so I hope that it's as beautiful as the photo made it look. And I also got this little throw blanket off of Amazon. It's really soft, it's really thin, so I think it'll be perfect for outdoors on a summer evening when you just need that little bit of warmth. And then finally, my favorite thing, I got this set of melamine dishes. I didn't want a set that was like your classic outdoor bright colors. I wanted something really beautiful and really neutral. So I found these ones. They are the pattern of like a classic piece of pottery but they're obviously melamine, so they won't break, which is so important, especially beside the pool. I ordered the classic dinner plate and then a set of, these are like the salad bowls, or um, I kind of got them more for the dessert side of things. I figured these two would be perfect for us and what we need them for, but there are other options that I'll link below as well. Thanks for joining me. This has been such an exciting process for me to finally get our outdoor space to a place where we can fully enjoy it. If you liked today's video, make sure you hit the like button and share with me in the comments some of your favorite ways to enjoy your outdoor space. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I have lots more home projects coming up on the horizon. Thanks for joining me today, friends, and remember that the best things in life are the little things like finally being able to sit out in the sunshine. Bye friends.